<laughs> over the holiday season, I dodged it. Um, something I didn't dodge, but I also wish I had. We were just kind of flipping around um, randomly as we were snowed in by our terrible Minnesota snowstorms. And um, the one of the channels that we were watching was showing a marathon of the Fantastic Beasts series. And it just sort of reminded me um, of, of the potential of a really great series that just took a hard left um, and w ended up being really disappointing to me. I mean, I, I'm sure there is a gamut of opinions about this, um, but to me, it, it especially is shown in the difference between the first movie, which I really, really liked and I thought had a lot of great potential and was just very unique storytelling, a fun kind of side background to the Harry Potter world, getting introduced to Newt Scamander and like how he wrote this book that, you know, appears in the Harry Potter books as part of Harry's coursework. It's so fun and such a unique story, such unique like vision in creating these creatures. And then the second one just felt like, like nobody had watched the first one and thought of any sort of like continuity going on other than like, oh, right, we have to use the same characters. We should do that. And we should also like have some beasts in there. They shouldn't like be central to the plot or anything. You know, we should just create some like fun stuff to put on the screen. But let's not like make any other connections at all. And uh, yeah. So I just I don't know. I was like watching that and just really thinking, man. What a series that could have been. And it was really kind of a bummer. And kind of inspired Dana. one of my my questions for us later as we talk yeah. about webtoons. But that's good. Dana, what do you think of the Fantastic Beast movies and or Harry Potter? Oh, I actually agree with everything you said, Andrea. I loved the first one for exactly the reasons you pointed out. It was the feeling of almost getting to experience Harry Potter again. You couldn't mm -hmm. imagine mm -hmm. it. It was this whole new world that was created. It was so unique, but familiar at the same time mm -hmm. because of the tie mm -hmm. into Harry Potter. The story was gripping and I had the same expectation. I thought, oh boy, this brand new material. They can really make the movie or make the story around the movie rather than making the movie around the book mm -hmm. like they did with Harry Potter. And the second one was so much darker. I love how you said it didn't tie in with the first one. I felt the same things. I just didn't get the same joy out of watching it. Did the third one even come out? I don't. Yes. Yeah. I, it's I also on I last year. HBO Max, I think, right? It's on HBO Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. John, what is your thought with it? You guys are huge Harry Potter fans. Yeah. Um, well, if it's any indicator, I didn't see the, the third one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think that it's amazing what they managed to achieve with the original Harry Potter movies, you know, like keeping mostly the same actors for the whole run of it. Mm -hmm. And like, even though shifting between directors and composers, like having a consistency and, you know, there were changes from the books, but some of them I'd argue for the better and others like, I mean, you have no choice. Um, and with Fantastic Beasts, yeah, I, I really liked the first one. I've always enjoyed the adult moments more like following the adults and the adult characters and even the Harry Potter books. And so I mm -hmm. liked having those, you know, this movie, Fantastic Beasts, being about that. Um, it was fun. It was quirky. We had cool performances. I did think from the beginning, it shouldn't be called Fantastic Beasts. Like, you're limiting yourself. You know, if you're going to have Fantastic Beasts, then it can be the first one can be called Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, but, I agree with right, that. How are you going to incorporate beasts into every one of them? It Because the, the crux of the story was really about Grindelwald. So mm -hmm. it needs to be something about Grindelwald, you know, his rise, his fall, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And so it could have been Wizarding Worlds, Grindelwald this, and, you know, Grindelwald's that, and Dumbledore and Grindelwald's that, you know, whatever it was. Um, or you could have just had yeah. three separate titles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like there's, there's yep. no need to like, in my opinion, have like a prefacing, like this thing and then, you know, semicolon or colon the rest of the title. Like we get it. We know, like as soon as you see the trailer, you're like, right, cool. Got it. 
Well, executives are wor very worried about audiences making the connection and understanding that it's part of the same universe as this other thing that you like. And yeah. then the, on top of that, getting worried that you don't know in which order to consume them. Oh, it's so know? silly. And There's so much handholding. Like people can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Especially with the internet now. It takes one, exactly. one search. Takes, you know, it's, yes, exactly. Like if you're not living through like the release in real time, like you said, yeah. it takes one one second search to just be like, what order? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I know we're we're not a panel of uh like hot disagreements at this point. Um, but uh <laughs> discussion. Cause yeah, it it just it was a it was a really a letdown. And um it's it also shows kind of where we're going because there's really heated up this last week rumors again about rebooting the entire Harry Potter franchise. Mm -hmm. um, there is talks with executives and JK Rowling to work together on creating some sort of f future movie projects and stuff like that. That was one thing a couple weeks back or whatever, which mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, that's fine. That makes sense. You know, they're looking to use the IP that they have the rights to and like, let's tell more stories. But then it comes out like, are we really talking about redoing the whole thing? Because right. that's the case. If that if there's any validity to that, it's a total mistake. I, I was Too just soon. talking about how Harry Potter was an amazing achievement that they managed to do that that story over that amount of time with the same actors. You're not doing that a second time. It's not happening. It will fall on its face. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. It, it certainly feels possible to do. Um, I mean, obviously they did it the first time. And then I think of like movies like, um, oh God, what was Wes Anderson's one that just came out um, a couple of years ago where they, it, like he filmed it over 12 years with the same cast. I want to say it's like The oh. Boy or something. It It was insane, like, it, it, it was like showing like literal different stages of like this boy growing into manhood. Um, and so it was like really fascinating to watch the actors like actually age like sure. these number, these specific number of years. So it would have to be like a very specific vision. You'd have to lock down very specific people. Do you know what I mean? Like this would be an insane feat. Um and you'd have to decide, I think, pretty quickly whether or not you wanted to just lock down, like, the core, like, we're going to lock down the Golden Trio and maybe two other of the kids, and then just, like, peripheral characters may have to just change or whatever. Um, so it certainly feels like you could maybe do it, but that's a huge, massive undertaking. And I don't feel it's necessary. It's too soon. Like, these movies are... These movies are still good. They're still popular. They're still like spawning off other like ideas, other IP. Like there's so much else to explore right now. Like why go back to this original material when you don't need to? Nobody is sitting there being like, these movies were so awful. We're so disappointed. I mean, there may be like one or two fringe people. I don't, I don't you know, speak for everybody in the entire world, but there's no like massive movement or like a general public feeling of disappointment. So don't mess with it yet. It's too soon. Yeah, it's we, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe I don't know of any, but usually, for instance, novels that were maybe written 100 years ago still don't get rewritten. They get reissued. They get new copies. Right. They get a Barnes and Noble edition, hardcover, whatever, you know, it's n but they don't get remade. Why? Because writing as a medium has writing novels has been largely the same for a long, like the technology hasn't changed. You can read that book then and you can read it now. If you understand the language, you can understand it. And we're to a point now with movies and a number of these and Video games is a different discussion, but the same as like music or whatever, where the quality is matured enough that a movie that's 15 years old, even 20 years old, can still like use the same film language of today or close enough and be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. We're, we're to a point where we don't have to remake movies. You can just re, yeah, um, 
re-release them, you know, put them out again, put out the different copy of this or whatever, make mm-hmm. an anniversary talking about this, whatever. Uh, we just, we don't need to do this anymore. It's clearly not out of need. We just somewhere in culture, we got to the point where we're kind of expected that we're going to keep remaking things and people are accepting that as normal. And it doesn't have to be normal because mm-hmm. we don't do this with other mediums. You know, I read a, you know, like there's some classic comic books. There's not a new version of it now. They didn't like, we're going to redraw this and we're going to change the dialogue up because we need to do that. No, you can still go read the thing. So mm-hmm. I just, I think it's all wrong. I really hope there's no validity to this. It would be a bad, bad move. I agree. I agree. Also, side note to to just like correct myself, uh, the movie I was thinking of was called Boyhood, not The Boy. Mm. And it was directed by Richard Linklater, not Wes okay. Anderson. Okay. And that got a lot of nice. Oscar buzz. Wasn't it nominated? Yes. Um, I believe Patricia Arquette won an Oscar, an Oscar for Best Actress. That was definitely in the talk for Best Film, Best Director best screenplay i think also so yeah okay love nice. when we can celebrate movies that do take you know new technology or new ways of filming and bring it to the forefront because there is still so much that we can do that we're not so movies like that or you know when james cameron came out with the first avatar and the whole thing was shot with a 3d camera for the first time like there are so many different ways that you can highlight stories. I agree. I wish we would do more of exploring those kind of ways to show the story rather than just recreating ones that have already been told. There's so many novels that are fantastic that have never been made into film adaptations, too. There's certainly no shortage of source material for them to pull from. So it does mm-hmm, seem right. very silly to reboot something so successful as Harry Potter so soon after its initial release. When you said, John, there's nothing new I feel like they would be bringing to the technology or the story at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't give any cares, you know, 100 years down the road. If you're like, we have a really cool idea because technology, storytelling, whatever is different. And you want to go after, you know, Harry Potter because, hey, there's like a really cool way we think we can show like the magic of the wizarding world great like that is a hundred years down the road i won't even know about it um (laughs) (laughs) probably (laughs) but you know like that's that's far enough along where like nobody's thinking like boy it's too soon to reboot you know this franchise but yeah for now just just leave it be guys